Knock, knock. Who's there? Little old lady. Little old lady who? Wow, I didn't know you could yodel. <laughs> how do you make a bandstand? How do you make a bandstand? I don't know. Take away their chairs. <laughs> ba -dum -bum. And hello, it's Don. And Gina with Focused Healthy Family. And it's time for another Tuesday Tips. So what's our tip today? So our tip today, if my glasses will give me the mid-range breathing <laughs> area, it's my biggest challenge with needing bifocals is that mid-range distance. One controlled study found that listening to Mozart was helpful for children dealing with ADD. Rosalie Ribolo Pratt, professional harpist and music medicine researcher and educator and colleagues studied 19 children ages 7 to 17 with ADD. They played recordings of Mozart from three times a week during neurofeedback sessions. The group that listened to Mozart reduced their theta brainwave activity, slow brain waves that are often excessive with ADD, in exact rhythm to the underlying beat of the music and displayed better focus and mood control, diminished impulsivity, and improved social skills. This is taken from the book, Change Your Brain, Change Your Life, by Daniel G. Amen, A-M-E-N, M-D. And he's, he's a renowned doctor with yeah, brain yeah. science and things. I'm not sure how old this book is because attention deficit disorder now is most labeled attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Okay. So you more typically hear ADHD. I remember when that was there was a shift there. So I'm not sure if people still are diagnosed ADD yet. So that's an interesting research study that was done on music and the brain. And so this is classical music they use specifically. This is probably, I don't know if this came out and then they started making all those baby Mozart, <laughs> your baby, you know, infant could learn things by listening to this music. I, I guess in the late 90s, that was like a big fad, really, you know, they, they marketed yeah. um, this concept. And yet, you know, they use that in a way that maybe if an oversell or a, like I said, a fad. And yet there is still Truth to it. Truth you know? to it. And the science behind it. Uh, music does, it affects different areas of the brain. I wonder if uh, if Mozart realized what, what, what kind of effects it had in some way. I mean, Mozart himself was most likely he... genius level. And uh, I was going to say Bach was the one that became deaf at a certain point, I think. Or Beethoven became deaf at a certain point. Beethoven was a big dog and they had movies about it. <laughs> That's why they call Beethoven. him Wolfgang yes. Mozart. Amadeus Mozart. Now I've got the song Amadeus running through my head. Wait a minute, now who is Wolfgang Amadeus. then? Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Oh, he had that big of a name. Wow. Well, that, that was a hard one to put on his driver's license, I bet. <laughs> I just know that because of that song that's now running through my head from the 1980s. Amadeus, Amadeus. Yeah, rock me, Amadeus. <laughs> and back to our tip. <laughs> me, Have huh? fun with music with your kids. There's research on classical music, and yet all music has an influence on us and our behavior. Yeah, it's not just for kids, actually. I, I like to tell my patients and cli clients about using music sometimes as meditation, you know, whatever you lose yourself into. And different types of music can have different effects on different people. What I find calming, someone else might not. What I find centering and focusing, and I like different types of music at different times of things I'm doing, how I'm feeling emotionally where I'm at. And some people get overwhelmed by music. I know one of our kids is just, it's too much input where another kid well, likes music going on while they're doing other things. It helps them to focus. And so there's just a lot, a lot we could talk about here with music. And this is just a short tip. 
we could do a whole podcast about mm -hmm. this. We'll have to find someone in the music world to do that with. And as we were talking about this tip, I went to a conference back when I used to do in-person conferences, not all online, to maintain my occupational therapy license. And I loved going to things for kids. Even though I was working mostly in geriatrics, I was raising children. And this book is by John Oritz, Ph.D., a licensed psychologist, certified clinical hypnotist, and psychoeducational trainer. I heard him speak, and when you go to these conferences and you hear them speak, then they sell their books and other products, usually at a nice discounted price. And I was always one to like, ooh, let me snatch that up. And I don't know that I've ever really read <laughs> yeah. much of this. That's, again, for another topic. And it's called Nurturing Your Child with Music, How Sound Awareness Creates Happy, Smart, and Confident Children. So John M. Ortiz, O-R-T-I-Z, Ph.D., and I know from the, the, the talk I went to, and again, this has been more than 10 years ago, talking about the effects it has on kids. I remember someone else has a whole book on Asperger, which is what used to be called that, so high-functioning autism, and how music and other things can be calming and affect the brain like we're talking about. And somewhere I have some CDs that were made specifically there's things with tones that can be calming to the brain. There's just a lot of different things out there. And, and, you know, people like psychologists who've done work with it and other research that's been done. And so I'm a collector of these books. And so that's things you can check out and learn more about. Dr. Um, Dr. Amen has all kinds of information on the brain and health. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had multiple people bring him up to me over the years dealing yeah. with our kids with anxiety disorders. So those are, we'll put those in the notes, right, Don? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you can find that information. And what other words of wisdom do you have, Don? I don't know. On music, I mean, I played music in band when I was in high school. Does that count? <laughs> it I mean, does. I, I've always had music in my life, though, that which is nice. I mean, what my, you know, from my own, having my, I remember saving up for to buy, you know, just, we bought uh, stereo pieces in pieces, like one at a time, you know, because that's all I could afford. And I Is remember that how you collected the whole system we had, or was that uh, bought later? That was bought when I was in when I moved out on my own. Okay, after you had your they had this huge uh, kind of not a, not a convention, but you know where you go there, and it, they had all this equipment out, electronics, and all this stuff that you could buy from. Straight from the vendor, kind of thing. Oh, is that when you bought all that? Yeah. So, but yeah, so I've had music in my life, so I'm glad for that because I'm, there's some kids that don't. And, and music, I think it makes a difference. It evokes memories. Oh, yeah. Music from your childhood. When I was a kid, my mom, you know, I was born in 69, so growing up in the 70s, my parents weren't exactly hippie parents. They were a little bit past that. They were like, pre-baby boomers born in 42 and 43 and so Anne Murray and Crystal Gale and John Denver. John Denver and Glenn Campbell and all these things she listened to which I wasn't a huge fan of as a kid especially when I got in my teen years but now like I love hearing that music because it yeah. it brings back those warmness those, those memories from young childhood and I know there's been research and things done with geriatric population, especially when you're looking at people with dementia and how playing music from time periods that they remember and that evokes the memories and and it even can help them to become vocal because singing is a different area of your brain than speech. And so sometimes when you can't connect with a person because of significant dementia, you know, talking about the sandwich generation here, parenting our children and our parents and ourselves that that's a huge tool that can be used. I remember bringing it up to my mom recently, just kind of hit me again. I, and like for my dad having the golf channel on, because <laughs> yeah. other news can stimulate his hallucinations and delusions, but he's, list, he's watched golf on TV for his almost his whole life. And so having that in the background is calming to him. But we also know he likes music and playing like 50s and 60s stuff because he'll sing along to it. And so it can be a real calming thing, and it can also be a way to access people with significant dementia that will bring them out in new ways and get them interacting and engaging 
and like it talks about here with children, that it can be very calming to the mind. So music, it's all around us. Yeah. Even in the, the deaf community, and I don't want to speak too much on this because I don't really know Well, they go by the vibration much, of it. But yeah, they can still enjoy it through other means. Yeah. And there's so many different kinds of music out there. If you look at different cultures throughout the world, from, you know, drumming circles, and we love to go see Billy Jonas because he made instruments instruments from things around the house. Yeah. I believe he played the guitar too, but like his drums were all like made out of recycled materials. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in with the 40s with big band and that uh I there's still I, I remember um after my mom passed, there was a song that kept going through my head um that I couldn't I couldn't find. I, I had a hard time finding it. And I finally found it. This now, this has been a couple of years ago. I found it. It was called The First Date. Um, shoot. And by the artist now. Anyway, it was a song that, and it brought, it evoked really unbelievable, beautiful memories for me okay. of my mom. And uh, listening to it just, it almost brought tears to my eyes because um, she was, she loved music. Well, you remember, uh, when uh, she she came down from my birthday down to your parents down the lake, and they they played um, Glenn Miller's uh, "In the Mood," and your mom and uh, my mom danced. And we called it dancing, dancing Grammys. Grammys yeah, because yeah, Harrison was so it, a baby back then, and um, yeah, so it was a way because they are really different generations. Like yeah, your your they're mom really is, more of the your her, their is, parents. Yeah, your mom is a generation really older than my my parents and but they you know they connected on that they both enjoyed that music mm -hmm. and that, that I can see them dancing there together somewhere we have a video of it I need to find that and but yeah so music has a lot to do with uh, uh, just it helps in a lot of different ways it's calming for, for kids it's uh, evokes memories for for adults and f for those seniors that are having problems it can also help them in different ways too so a lot can be done with the music. And I just want to point out for those with the older kids that maybe listening to music we don't like, we need to respect other people's differences and tastes in mm -hmm. music. And one way to connect with your kids is tuning into their world a little bit. So my kids grew up listening to my music, and some of it they liked. But I've also listened to the music that they enjoy. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now that our two kids are driving and they put their music on if they're driving, our oldest is great because if we go on a car trip together, he'll play his stuff. 70s, that, yeah. Well, he's been playing this 80s mix that he created, and I've been calling out the songs that are not really from the 80s, and I'm almost right every single time, and he gets a kick out of that. So... But realizing that even if you don't like the language of the music, you know, what is it that your kids like about that? They're connecting with it rather than just saying, oh, that's terrible music. That's awful music. Well, it's music that you don't enjoy. Well, think about that. It goes that back in generations because I think even at a time uh, like talking about Glenn Miller in the 40s, his music at the time was considered kind of radical. Okay. Because it was... It was different. It got people dancing and doing, and that was not really the, the the thing at the time. So if you think about it, throughout generations, it's always been the music that's coming out. People had a hard time it, with it's it. It's sort of that know. disconnect with the young generation, like when rock and roll came yeah. out, and sort oh, of Elvis, and you know he, that he stirred up a lot of controversy, you know, from his movements and his and even the songs. So it. It's it's funny to see every time a kind of a new generation comes out with music, the older generations some have a hard time, you know, and they can, like you say, they, they have a hard time respecting, you know, the new generation's music. And I guess probably more because our oldest child just listened to what we listened to. As I started listening more of the other kids' music, I'm like, oh, you know, I kind of like this, or I like that, or now my... One daughter will like, Mom, I think you might like this song. And then it becomes my favorite. And I've started listening to the radio station locally here. It's 107.9 that plays the more modern stuff. And I'm like, there's some of this I like on here. <laughs> and I, I've listened to the classic rock, oldies, 70s, 80s, 90s so much that it feels like the same songs. Yeah. I, I have playlists and I, I listen to those. Yet sometimes I like the randomness of the radio. 
And so I've discovered that there's different things that I like. I used to swear that I liked everything but country. And that's not entirely true. There are some country songs that I like and some singers that I like. Mm -hmm. And even with rap, that was another thing I said I never liked. But there's so many genres of music. It's fascinating talking about this with my kids. And when I was a kid, I mean, it was was pretty... There were, I don't know how many categories, but it just feels like there's such a variety now. And it's kind of exciting and interesting to learn about. And so there's avenues for learning and connecting with our kids, stepping back and not judging other people in their music, realizing how music can be helpful, yet not trying to overdo it, especially with a young child. Like, oh, you're going to listen to this every day and it's going to make you smart. Not putting all that expectation on there, but just enhancing where they're at and really connecting with older people, especially even without dementia, but especially then how therapeutic it can be. So there's a whole lot there, and I look forward to holding a big podcast and getting someone a little more expertise on this to discuss this with. If you know someone like that, or you are, please reach out, because we'd love to do a whole podcast around this. And we would love comments, too. Let us know if you liked this, if you didn't like it, if if there's another uh, subject you'd like us to even cover just on on some tips on. Um, And then, of course... Keep in mind, Thursdays, we do our full podcast uh, every Thursday. And, of course, Tuesday tips are every Tuesday. So you can find out more about all that at our website, www.focusedhealthyfamily.com. That's Focus with an E-D, healthyfamily.com. And remember, how you speak to your children and sing to them shapes (laughs) their future 